My guest tonight are a Pulitzer Prize winning author who's at a front row seat to nearly half a century of presidential history and a pair of young women who make comedy and history with every episode of their hit show, Broad City. Give it up for, for Abby, Abby Jacobson, Jacobson Alana, Alana Glazer, and Doris Kurz Goodwin. Doris, thanks for being here on this historic night. Are you feeling the history of this moment? Without a question. I mean, it's historic, right? Why? Well, you're the historian. You have to tell me <laughs> You this. have to answer this for us. None of us here, none of our parents, none of our grandparents, nobody in the history of this whole nation has seen a woman who has become the nominee of a major party. That's history. No one's Something even come close. No one's even come close. The amazing thing, I think, is maybe now that she's come this close, We've had 43 men presidents. Maybe there'll be 43 female presidents coming after. Can you imagine? <laughs> and that, in a row. In a row. In a row. A whole string of them. Just to even things out. And then imagine there'll be some little boy saying, Will I ever be president? <laughs> you don't feel bad. I uh, know, yeah, no, no, I've got hope for him. I've got hope for him. Um, now, uh, Abby and Alana, uh, you know, are you people feeling the hills? Are you heading for the hills? Have you, have you? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do an opposite of feel the burn, <laughs> heading for the hills. Uh, some people, like there's been some sort of complaining that, uh, or I'm noticing that some young women who identify themselves as feminists, who, do, do you identify yourself as feminists? Yeah. That, yes. they, that they were not being drawn to Hillary Clinton and, you know, sort of observers of your generation didn't understand. Do, do, do you think that maybe that's over now, that she's got the nomination? I hope so. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's probably a little bit of that, but I hope so. I mean, I, th I don't think you could watch tonight yeah. and this week full of these amazing speeches and not feel that she is just the best candidate and not feel like, even, even if you did support, support Bernie, which I, I loved Bernie, but I think that right now, like, watching that, I was just, like, blown away. And also, it's like, you know, we've... We've talked about this, about we're not, we don't support Hillary just because she's a woman. And if you don't support Hillary, that doesn't mean you're not a feminist either. You know, uh, there's this language that's all mutually exclusive and so polarizing. And you have to only like this, and you have to not like this. And if you like this, you don't like this. It's that like very Hillary Bernie stuff was crazy. That stuff was getting crazy. And they overlap, like 90% of their policies overlap. Um, but we are, I'm heading for the hills. <laughs> I'm up in the hills. Yes. I'm like. Mm. Yeah. Now, have all, have all three of you uh, met Secretary Clinton? I, I slept over with her at the White House. <laughs> do, no. go, do go on. What, what, how did no. this come about? <laughs> How did this come about? What happened is I was on the radio talking about Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt and how I wished I could see the second floor of the White House when Churchill was there and Harry Hopkins and Franklin and Eleanor. And I hadn't asked Lyndon Johnson when I was up there when I was 24, who slept where? Hillary heard me on the radio. She said, come sleep over at the White House and we'll figure out where everyone slept 50 years earlier. With my map in hand, we figured out, yes, Bill Clinton is sleeping where FDR was. We were in Winston Churchill's bedroom, which meant there was no way I could sleep. He was in the corner drinking his brandy and smoking his cigar. So, yes, I, I liked her. She was engaging. We talked about Eleanor Roosevelt, our mutual, respectful, affectionate person. I mean, there was some, uh, I remember talking about that she was sort of trying to communicate with Eleanor Roosevelt when she was the first lady to understand her job and how she could do a better job. Well, women need mentors. That's been part of the problem why we haven't had so many women into office. I mean, you guys have mentors, right? That's right. So Eleanor was a mentor to Hillary. I think it's great. Who's your mentor? Amy Poehler, baby. Yeah. Oh, that's a good mentor. That's a good mentor. I think that our... To compare comedy to politics <laughs> it should be done. Sure. No, does. but like that, yeah, there's, um, there's, def there's so many people that came before us and that have set the path for, for us, and Amy's definitely ours, not just for our show, but 
just in general as a comedian. And you guys uh, met Secretary Clinton. She was on your show, right? Yeah, yeah. we met her when, when we <laughs> begged and stalked her to be on our show. <laughs> well, I think we have a, we have a clip yes, here. I yes, think this is the yes. two of you uh, coming to her campaign offices right. to volunteer. Yeah. Right. Uh, Jim? Sorry, we are just so excited. It's <laughs> all right. Just take your time. One more. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ilana. Thank you for all of your help. You know of me? Well, you're wearing a name tag. <sighs> Abby, hello. <laughs> Proud demo. Crat. <laughs> College. <laughs> Aquarius. <laughs> I pegged Secretary Clinton. Madam, President, she came. I can't afford to volunteer her full time, but I still want to get the word out. So I vow to tweet once a week, vote for Hillary, yas, yas, yas. Nicely done. Nicely done. Yeah. It was a very unreal experience. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, imagine was, it would be. Yeah. She was so cool and her like people were so cool. Everybody was it was really cohesive with like who I feel like we saw speak tonight. Um uh, now uh, Doris, uh people yeah. always say about uh, Secretary Clinton this gets said all over and over again that she is the most qualified candidate uh, to ever seek the office of president. Is that hyperbole or is that true? Because there have been a lot of qualified people, aren't there? Well, I mean, President Obama said that the other night, even more qualified than Bill, even more qualified than him. She's had experience at all sorts of levels. Think about it. When she was first lady in Arkansas, she saw it from a local state level. Then she becomes in the White House, so she sees what pressures there are on a president. And then she becomes a senator from New York, and then she becomes secretary of state. So all the levels of government she's seen, she's been a public servant. I mean, the problem today is that being a politician is not looked on as an honorable thing. But if she can change that perspective and say that being a public servant and giving your life for a long time, it gets me so mad when we worry about whether she's likable or not. I mean, likability matters. It gives you a cushion if you're in politics. I mean, good old Eisenhower, he was, the saying for him was, I like Ike. Because Ike is easy to like. So that helped him a lot. <laughs> That's the kind of Let thing. Let me get those lyrics down again. I'm not sure if I can memorize that. What is Isn't that the kind yes. of thing you would say? I yeah, it would. Well, yeah, but yeah. anyway, if I'm simple minded. <laughs> if you're likable, it helps you. But it helps you get elected. It doesn't helps help you get government. elected. Experience helps you. But the most important thing of all is temperament, character, disposition. Emotional intelligence, resilience, those are the questions that we really have to care about with well, both of these characters. Who had, what president, uh, you would say, uh, what, what modern president, say the 20th century president, has the best temperament for the office? I would say FDR. I mean, think of it, the middle of the Depression, and what does he do? Come on to the stage and say, things are going to be all right because I believe in the future. He was optimistic. He'd come through polio. He was able to somehow become a huge leader without having the ability to walk on his own power. The minute he got elected, people wrote in and said, my roof has fallen off, I've lost my job, my dog died, my wife hates me, but it's going to be all right because you are there in the White House. Now, that's a temperament that connects with people. Well, you uh, look surprised. Um, I'm not surprised, but uh, that is a, a feeling that I haven't seen a politician be able to convey in my lifetime. I think that's fair. Not even Obama or Bill Clinton, who really connected well. Maybe Reagan, actually. Reagan, for some people, made them feel like, well, it was morning in America, or tomorrow was going to be more hopeful because of his own sunny disposition. And I think that's really important. I think you need to feel good about your country and where it's going. And, and feel that you have confidence in the person, but that person has to have confidence in themselves. That's the key. I mean, that, you must feel that when you're doing comedy. You have to have confidence in yourself or you can't project fun and humor. Do you have confidence in yourself when you're doing comedy? <laughs> because I find insecurity makes me work even harder. Yeah. I think that's, a, that's pretty accurate. Yeah, right before we came out, Alana and I looked at each other and we're like, well, <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You guys, were you guys together backstage just right now before you came well, out to spend some time me, together? They saw me in my curlers. And oh, compassed. really? We just no. stood in a cloud of smoke together uh -huh. for a really long time, and like almost, like almost all of us got lost back there. Uh -huh. we, we really because the three of you were standing in a cloud of smoke together, and because of who you are, I have to ask you legally, <laughs> Doris, are you high right now? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer that. You don't have to answer that. 
Doris Kearns Goodwin, Abby Jacobson, and Alana Glazer, everybody. We'll be right back.